Well, uh, thanks again for being here. What? Uh, well, I want to ask a question, but I don't know which one. Probably, um, since you already voted for something, you have an idea what they will do. So the plan for the rest of the uh, course of the There was a little mismatch uh, between uh, general books of the course, policies, and actual activity. So, from the fact that the course you were expecting some physical chemistry, and the fact you got some. <laughs> And the actual examples like combustion, explosives, or maybe something less uh, spectacular, more practical sort of cells. Focusing on your view of the world, making connections with the 
was supposed to make two and then. Tried to run the code. Run this code. What, 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 what have you seen? How, how does it? Uh, how does it look? So you, you uh, everyone has uh, observed that. So uh, right now you do have several versions of the code, and each of them have slightly different potential. But the code is the same. Um, I suggest that you start with the version of the code that uh, has comments, because we inherited from previous years there were each line was commented, and it will make our uh, assignment easier. And uh, what I also suggest to do is to go to line number 60 and uh, try to uh, uncomment remove the percent in front of V equals V times Z zero. So um, we will go through all details, but um, there are a couple of systems that you are well aware of, is electron in free space and electron in the box. And if you set up potential energy equals zero, then it will be free space. So you already know everything, how, how it will uh, work, and you, you got your uh, understanding of what to expect. So uh, if you make this change, save uh, the code and let it run, um, you see something like this, right? The Mexican sombrero makes becomes wider and wider and moves from left to the right. What is it? How do you interpret it? So if it's in free space, just like expand out over time. So that's kind of that show. Yes. So it's okay. it moves with constant velocity. The center moves with constant velocity and uh, it expands around the chains. Right? So uh, if we would apply this code only for this situation, it would be very similar for it. But it is kind of universal. It's uh, changing. Where 
Where's your... Principles of wave packet propagation. So let's plan to maybe invest time until uh, six for uh, for the code, and then uh, probably focus on the whole work. If there will be questions. Is your least favorite activity in the class browsing through your members? Uh, which, how many ways to predict the future you can remember? Uh, <laughs> you should get a Nobel Prize. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. But uh, we, oh, you can just name them before getting your prize. Uh, time. <laughs> that, that ensure you get time to tell you what you're It's like four and one of them was wrong. <laughs> you named four and one of them was wrong. <laughs> Well, <laughs> time independent changing equation is not to, uh, for predicting future. It's just one of the general components for, for anything. But uh, one, so what uh, Alex named was uh, evolution of the rate of time dependent changing equation and Heisenberg equation of motion, right? Let's leave it to it. Okay, four. But um, let's f focus on uh, evolution of the rate. We spent so long time at the beginning of the course to get through it and it would be very pity to think that it was just for academic purposes. So if we return back to evolution of um, What this code does is not super elegant and efficient. Most um, practical efforts to solve real world problem make more tailored, more specific tools for, for each problem. And uh, here, more for division purposes, we are trying to use something universal. So uh, how does evolution operator look like? And what to do if you have forgotten? I uh, read in, some, in eyes of some of you that if I have forgotten something, I need to go to Wikipedia. So, uh, what should I write for evolution of the I don't have it here, it's just your, your I don't have a cheat sheet. Or generally, what, what is evolution of the So it is a thing that uh, helps to predict the future. It, it includes Hamiltonian, yes. So it uh, uh, includes so it's Hamiltonian and it predicts the future. So what, what does it mean, predict the future, in a sense of wave function? What 
is your verbal formula for this. I have no doubt that you will. It's uh, just maybe a way to formulate it. Uh, future of an electron, that is always described as a uh, wave function, right? So future means to know wave function in the, of the future. And, uh, future means your time is substantially bigger than zero. You cannot know the future if you do not know the past. So it's uh, time equal to zero, smaller than zero. So the evolution accelerator is a thing that converts past into the future. that you were sitting on the lectures. <laughs> so phase accumulation, how, how do I do it? Well, let's first put it like phase accumulation. Correct? So and what, what is here? Um, in some people, um, let, let me share a way like if there will be an, I'm not going to do the full, I'm not going to offer an oral example. In some schools, there are frequent oral, oral exams. And if you need to answer something, you don't remember, there is a way to bypass. Like, give evolution operator. You just add a symbol, put U that goes from zero to 10. This is not wrong. It doesn't give the answer, but at least it, it uh, uh, brings you to the next uh, point of discussion. So what do I do if I have forgotten how to do this phase accumulation? Well, if I'm good enough, I would like to hide it. And I suddenly decide that I need an evolution operator. Is there any information that you remember, more or less? So since all things are in interconnected, one can start from uh, being somewhere apart and then scroll the logical connections. Can we say that we remember time dependent choosing equation? Yes? Okay, so how do I write it? So, um, I'm going to do some uh, not rigorous, I would say, if there is an alchemistry, I'm going to do some owl math. If we, for, for, for the time, not for the record, not for the general public, Forget about all differential operators inside the Hamilton table and just solve it as a simple differential equation with uh, all constants. Um, d psi over dt, we can migrate dt over the, to the, uh, multiply both parts by dt and divide both parts by psi. So it will be d psi 
for psi equals minus two over h bar h dt. It's for formal already. Uh, um, how do you solve this equation? I always forget who, but I know that 50% of the class is taking differential equations. So you just write an uh, integral here and there, right? On the left, it will be integration over psi as abstract variable, and on the uh, right, it will be integration over time. So, what is logarithm of uh, deep psi over psi? I already disclosed my. <laughs> what is the integral of deep psi over psi? Okay. And if you want to be uh, very rigorous, we can minus um, sign out, right? For the free term. It's not surprises you. Okay. And on the right side, if you just minus i for h bar integral h dt, you just keep it as is. And you know that subtraction of logarithms is just um, dividing their arguments. So what do you do next if uh, it would be forcing differential equations? Right. So you could take exponential of logarithm and exponential in the power of this stuff. Then you get the psi divided by psi naught equals e to the minus i h bar integral h dt. And if you multiply everything by psi naught, psi naught will be, will be there. So uh, if, and, and this is a, the answer for evolution operator. So this psi naught was uh, past, psi is function of t is, is the future. Originally, at the beginning of the class, we were uh, coming up with this, to this equation from some philosophical considerations for model and phase accumulation. But now, uh, with your strengths, you can just formally derive it from Schrodinger equation, right? If you remember Schrodinger equation, you can reproduce evolution of the So it's question number one, principles of wave packet propagation. Who was, uh, it was a selection of you. Uh, presentations will be brief. Uh, there is no guarantee that uh, everyone will have time to show all multitude and strengths of your knowledge, but it's better if you uh, are ready to deliver more than time allows. Let's have some backup slides, yes? This is the principles of wave Wave yes. Okay. So the code uh, takes initial uh, wave function. We set up initial wave function at time zero, and then apply the evolution operator to get wave function at some uh, later time. There is a little technical detail. I'll keep it on, on the board for, for briefly. In order to avoid numerical error,
the propagation is made by uh, infinitesimal, which means small time. So instead of integral, it's just um, Hamiltonian times uh, increment of time. And we are propagating forward not by long time period, but very short, short time increment. So if we believe this, uh, that this is an appropriate way to predict future, then we need to loop this procedure. So we need to make uh, um, <coughs> redefine t equals t plus delta t psi of t equals psi of t plus delta t. And then we need to repeat this procedure. Right? And then uh, our code will go through from time equals 0 to time equals uh, delta t, then 2 delta t, then uh, 3 delta t and it will propagate forward in time. So the main uh, principle is uh, loop through infinitesimal increment. So there are two aspects uh, of dealing with it. First, where this uh, looping is in the code, which we can glance through and find immediately. And another aspect, we are departing from uh, abstract mathematical symbols. We are recognizing that each operators are either differential operator, or if we are in finite differences, it is like derivatives in finite differences. So Hamiltonian means like potential plus kinetic energy and all these uh, things are operators that need to be defined. So there are two things. Where this stuff is in the code, where the loop is, and second, how the Hamiltonian is defined. So the Hamiltonian, which was the choice of Kevin by now, uh, I didn't have time to like approve uh, distribution. Maybe later on we will make uh, make sure that everyone has uh, even share. But by now it is uh, Kevin's choice Hamiltonian. But we cannot go directly to Hamiltonian for uh, the following reason. Hamiltonian does include kinetic energy, and kinetic energy depends on momentum. Momentum is more basic than kinetic energy and Hamiltonian, and first we need to go over, over momentum and find a way how to define it. But before we go to definition of operators, let's scroll through and uh, find lines of the, of the code that uh, will um, corresponds to this loop. Which command in the script, script uh, sets up a loop, a cycle? Okay, so we are uh, going forward and looking for loop. We are looking for command four. No, this is not because no, this is not. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. We are very close. Okay, so line 164, if you are using uh, WP free AVP comments, the version with comments. So the uh, loop variable scrolls through several time steps, which, as you can guess, is defined by a, by a number of time steps that we need to come through and tell. 
Um, okay, and line one seventy two is implementation of, of this equation. So this is referred to as variable psi two. This is also referred to as variable psi two. And it is not variable, it's just uh, it's a vector of, uh, for the wave function, which is defined at, at several positions. And uh, the evolution operator is defined by this uh, g tau 2. And if you scroll further down, you'll see that this loop ends, and uh, the script is mandated to go over this loop again and again. Any objections or protests? No? Okay, so um, let me make a little comment irrelevant to your presentation, just for, for general uh, understanding of the code. So we are propagating forward in time. At each point of time, we recompute wave function. And as soon as we know wave function at a given point of time, we can find some observables like expectation values of whatever position, momentum, or maybe something more complicated. So it is what this code will be doing. And in addition, at each moment of time, the wave function can be converted into a probability distribution that can be plotted as a function of position and time. If you scroll through uh, stuff that code generates, you see that one of the things coming uh, at the bottom, it looks like Gaussian shape at the beginning, another axis is time, and it uh, gets lower and wider. So it's probability, and uh, the movie that you see is also probability distribution as uh, time goes by. So although we are predicting and computing wave function, we are displaying probability. Why? Why, uh, are, uh, why there is an optimal decision to show visualized probability distribution instead of wave function? Isn't that, isn't that like observable? Yes, and practically. Why, what is wrong with wave function? What is not comfortable? Yes. And our um, vision is real. Right? So if you need to plot a wave function, we need to uh, have it either to have imaginary vision or we need to, to plot simultaneously real and imaginary part, which we did once in the, in the past. And immediately, next line, here is a prop 2, psi 2 star. Uh, conjugated psi. So this uh, is a probability distribution at a given point of time. Okay, we are done with principles of wave packet propagation. There are some additional things, but uh, it will be too much for now. Momentum operator. This is um, really challenging stuff. I need to erase uh, things from, from this board and, and uh, start over. You don't need this. I have your permission to erase.
what is uh, what is sketched here? What is your opinion? Yes, but uh, why I decided to avoid drawing a continuous line and put just ugly sticks up. Can we what can we allow can computer digest continuous lines in general? No. So any function is just a set of discrete values. One needs to some values of x and some values of y, right? So in if we want to define the function by values as certain arguments and certain values of uh, position. We need to define the grid, discrete space. Continuous positions are represented only by selected points in space, which start from uh, initial ends with uh, final, we have uh, as many as uh, n capital, and maybe we will find out, maybe the code use something like uh, n x and n position, we'll check it out. And uh, each grid points are offset by step in position, delta x. So offset of position, position offset, between grid points. So our wave function, which we will call the psi, psi two, it will be a column vector of these values, psi not psi of delta x, psi of two delta x. Psi of three delta x, as many as we need. Psi of n capital minus one delta x. Psi of n capital times delta x. Make sense? So it's it's not a big discovery. It's a standard thing in uh, if you do computation, but it's better to uh, verbalize it and. Uh, have it as a part of your presentations because it's so easy to skip important things and then lose uh, connections. I'm going to ask a question, but I'm not expecting an answer. Just uh, giving you a seed of, of, of thought. to a matrix of, of this many points squared, right? So right now, the question is how the matrix representing momentum operator will look like. If you have an idea, try it. If you, if you don't, it's fine. Just try to say. This is a main challenge uh, if you uh, be our main challenge if we would decide to design this code from the beginning. So how to implement a measurement operator? Because the rest can be rolled over. The, uh, everything can be uh, for an operator just take square and multiply it by itself. And uh, so this is a challenge. How do we start to, to address it? Probably, I would 
do the thing that you hate. And scroll through my memory for definition of momentum operator. So, psi is a column vector with n elements. We need to design a matrix of n times n, which will be equivalent to the differential operator. So we need to define derivative in finite differences. Even if it is not your subject to present, do not please do not think that ah, it's for him, for her. I can see it. We will, we will need this part of information for all following steps. Just uh, friendly enough. So, derivative in finite differences. What is the definition of derivative? I'm not uh, uh, challenging your knowledge. 100% sure that you, you know it's just uh, I'm challenging your ability to verbalize it in a short uh, sentence. Okay, relative change of the function. Small, yes. Or if, if our independent variable is position, then change of a function for very small change of, uh, of position. So change of a function. It's like uh, election slogan of the previous president, change. So, um, Psi of x plus delta x, let's see, minus psi uh, of x divided by delta x in the limit that delta x uh, goes to zero. What do you think? Would you approve? Anyone develops protests? No? Okay, so from now on, it is definition of variable approved by majority. Can we implement this definition in the space of these discrete uh, values of the uh, wave function? So what we can try to is to assume that we already got the momentum operator that has acted on, on our wave function. So instead of deriving operator, um, I'm going to write something that will 
give us result of application of the uh, momentum curator derivative theory. I don't know how to start it logically, but I'll start writing and maybe you find better way to verbalize it. So at grid point zero, it will be value of wave function at next grid point, zero plus delta x, minus value of a wave function at this point, zero divided by delta x. At grid point number one, it will be uh, subsequent, next one, psi of 2 delta x minus psi of delta x divided by delta x. At grid point number, number 2, it will be psi of 3 delta x minus psi of 2 delta x divided by delta x. What am I doing? How to verbalize it? Psi of uh, let's say k plus one multiplied by delta x minus psi of k times delta x divided by delta x. Next, minus previous. previous with this height. So we are computing the offsets of the previous minus, uh, next minus previous, this much, this much, here it will be not much, here it will be negative, here it will be negative. Okay, right? So uh, the change of the wave function in respect to the step along x. Well, in some sense, it is slow. I just don't want to use this word because if psi is uh, complex, then it will be a complex. But we are practicing in order to implement momentum operator, we are practicing finite difference. So we subtract values of function at nearest neighbors and store it at the spots corresponding to the uh, appropriate grid points. Any objections about this, this procedure? Like, would you agree that this procedure in discrete space would be implementation of the definition of derivative. Yes? No, 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 it's not summation. Those are, uh, this is a vector, multidimensional vector of so many uh, elements. And each element of this vector is this uh, uh, subtraction. Okay? So result of applying momentum operator to wave function you will have the same nature as wave function. If our wave function was a uh, column vector of so many values, then result of application of momentum operator will be again column vector of so many values. Okay? We are very, very close. Now, let me check if uh, the
diesen Fokus. So, now the main part of, uh, of the computational implementation of momentum operator. So here I will write a vector for wave function psi. So I will repeat just uh, when I need to calm down, I just repeat some words. I will write it once again. Psi, not psi, delta x. Psi, 2 delta x. Psi, 3 delta x. Now, I do want to design such metrics which will help me to practice row by column procedure. And by applying these unknown metrics to this set of numbers stored in the col column, I will get this set of numbers. No, the metrics will be not diagonal. But the good news are that here, um, let's let's start from, from from this one, from the first element. So, in order to obtain the first element of the result, we need just two first element of the how to say reactant, precursor, if you speak chemical language, mathematical reactant. Um, we need to use the first one with minus sign and uh, next one with plus sign. And uh, all constants will be, will, will be put out of brackets. So, this element, I can already break it onto cells. So, uh, in order to obtain obtain uh, this element from here, we put zeros comes with minus one, and the first comes with plus one, and the rest elements do not contribute to here, so we put zeros. Make sense? This is one of the hardest part. Do, do, do not worry if, uh, if, you, if it doesn't go smoothly, just slowly. If you practice row by column, if you multiply this row by this column, minus one times psi zero, you'll give this one and plus one times psi of delta x, you'll give this one. And there are no others contributors. Now, for the element here, do we have psi defined at uh, zero? No, so we put zero here. Do we have psi defined at uh, one delta x? With which sign? Negative. Minus one. Do we have psi defined at two delta x? With which sign? Do we have psi defined at three delta x? Okay. Let's repeat further. I don't want to uh, distort you from your comfort, but next year probably it will be good practice to call one, everyone by, one by one and draw it. Keep, keep sitting, don't, don't become nervous. So, do we have, for, for, for this term, do we have a uh, contribution from Psi zero? Do we have contribution from Psi at one delta x? Do we have contribution from psi at 2 delta x. With which sign? 
Do you have contribution uh, from, say, at 3.x? Yes. Which saying? And then zeros. And then um, it's enough. We do not need to, to uh, progress further because we catch the pattern. So on the main diagonal, it will be minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. On the upper sub-diagonal, it will be plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Right? This is the main principle of defining momentum operator in discrete computerized space. Yes? What happens when you get to the bottom right corner? We apply periodic boundary conditions. Uh -huh. I didn't answer anything. I just uh, used uh, a smart word. So <laughs> we uh, put plus one here and minus one on, on the diagonal. So this code becomes possible in, in two cases. You know that we cannot, we do not have computers with infinite number of grid points. We always need to have finite number. And our space is infinite. The, the question is really good. So how do we describe infinite space with finite size computer memory? There are two ways. Either to assume that there are uh, walls of the box, and at some point it will reflect, and then we just put put zeros at the edges because there is no momentum if it hits the walls. Or we implement so-called periodic boundary condition concept, which is uh, one of another challenging concept. That's when you present the little white. Mm. Please switch on your imagination and assume that I'm accelerating, ramping, and I smash into the wall. You can imagine it, right? It's very satisfying. <laughs> and instead of smashing into the wall, suddenly I disappear and reappear from the door and, and entering the room from the other side. And then running again, smashing into the wall, and instead of like really smashing, reappearing from, 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 the, from the door. Imagine? So it is periodic boundary condition. So instead of reflecting, I just reappear from the other side. Therefore, you put plus one here. OK? Good. So um, there are some additional technical details. Like, this matrix is uh, very convincing in, uh, for, for common sense, but it is not symmetric. It is a little better if uh, we uh, define this plus and minus not along the main, uh, main diagonal, but along two uh, sub-diagonals. And actually, um, did you ever heard about names Rune Kutter? No, okay. Uh, uh, the derivative here has limit, delta x goes to zero. But if you do practical applied math, there will be always an error between abstract derivative and finite differences derivative. There is a way to take into account uh, uh, additional terms that you implement psi of uh, x minus delta x, psi of uh, x minus 2 delta x. They will contribute less and less. They will be vanishing. It's like Taylor series. But they will make derivative more exact, mathematically. So uh, in realistic implementation of, of uh, momentum, there, there are some additional tricks, which we do not care right now. This equation is sufficient. 
if we literally type it in, the code will work. It will give a little less precision. But it is a, it is a correct approach. So we should uh, finish the code and s probably switch to homeworks, which uh, you may be interested in, right? So uh, let's quickly find where this momentum operator is defined, and it probably will be enough of coding for today. So one definition of momentum operator is in line 108. This will not look like uh, what uh, we were discussing. But if we plot this P sub P, Px, it will look similar to what we discussed. It, uh, it is defined for more complicated procedure. And since uh, um, One of the feature of a true scientist, ideal scientist, I wouldn't say true or untrue, is an attempt to find his or her own errors rather than let others to find them. So to be critical and try to look back and, and identify if anything was not trustable enough and try to improve precision. It's not sufficient, like anyone who finds uh, error doesn't mean automatically becomes uh, successful scientist, but it, it, it is a good thing. And by, driven by this idea, we will have alternative ways to predict future, like alternative futures. Uh, they will use similar methods with little technical differences. And we will see that at short time, uh, for a simple system, they will predict uh, develop identical predictions, but as long as we go more further and further forward in future, they will start slightly di diverge. So there will be several definitions of uh, P uh, operator. There will be another one. You know, so this is line 108. Another one is in line uh, 126. So we are already at the limit of our uh, abilities to, to absorb new information. So how do we plot, how do, do we visualize matrices? So um, I was plotting the px object. And if you type in size, size px, you see it, it is a matrix. It has a dimension 200 by 200. Wave function is 200 uh, elements, and matrix is 100 by 200. If you try to plot real part, it comes some strange, almost constant value. If you try to plot imaginary part, we see things which are large near the main diagonal, and then they are smaller and decreasing on the sub-diagonals. 
So uh, this is implementation of the stuff that we have behind the behind the screen. Okay. So the main diagonal is uh, whatever uh, we predicted it to be negative one. Here it is something different, and then it is it changes sign. And in order to make definition of derivative of momentum operator more precise, it uh, alternates sign and decreases very quickly. And this stuff at the edges uh, is added in order to answer a question by Alex, in order for me to smash into the wall, in order to implement periodic boundary conditions. Right? Enough? Um, any questions from Bill? Because you signed up for, for this subject. Huh? Okay. Okay. Good. So take a, let's take a breeze. I will erase uh, the writings on the, on the screen. Let's see. And uh, then I will make a circle and uh, develop an interview. What, uh, which problems of the homework induce most of the questions? There's a two for the position board. Mm -hmm. so it's like, it's like, that's the square root of the eight star. Because here, look at the position. I have a two and a W. Instead of here, it's just a seven and a W. So 
much.
So, uh, was it everyone agreed that uh, 2A is the bottleneck to go forward? Or uh, some, some of you go through? So, the little comment on, on uh, 2A would be you, would, you wouldn't vote against it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when we find the, a matrix element, we just plug in the uh, x instead of operator, and our phi one star, or if you, if you will, bra of state one, and uh, phi one without star, or if you will, cat of uh, state one and then integrate. So it will be integral one over, one over L, sine x squared, x over L, times x dx.
So uh, the sine sine square function has maximum worth on, on the half halfway, and it will uh, parse. So here, uh, the re resulting function is uh, zero. Here is it zero k. So product of x times sine by x over l uh, will be maximum near this L over two. And if you integrate it carefully and take into account of normalization, you should get L, L over two. It's just uh, expectation value to find uh, electron, most probable place where electron can be found. If it is residing in the first state, the ground state will be the middle of the box. I'm not doing the math, but I will be checking and grading. I'm skipping it. Okay. This, this integral is uh, doable. But, and the same for, for 2 x 2. You, pr you do the same practice, and when you find that it is L over 2, it's the right answer. The same for grading, you just call it. But the uh, off diagonal matrix elements of position, one, x, two. This is a true mathematical challenge, and uh, I'm willing to give some comments to help everyone to go through. If you have successfully completed this part, just go forward with other assignments, with other tasks. But if not, uh, let's, uh, let's discuss it. So we are practicing yeah. e integral one square root of L sine by x L times x times e square root of L sine two by x L dx. <coughs> nothing physical, there is nothing chemistry, it is pure math, right? But we, we need to get through it. There are three ideas uh, in order to take this integral. So first, convert product into sum. Uh, second, upon we get a sum, treat it as two, two there will be two independent integrals just to save space and uh, do them one by one. Uh, two. And uh, third will be integration by parts. It's not any, there are nothing new for you. You know integration by parts. Integral of u dv. Equals what? Right. So if um, if we practice three of these uh, steps, we should get uh, something like. Over nine square root of, of L, or one over square root of L. I don't remember it from the top of the head, but we, I'll try to go over the steps. Um, Jump to, to get it back. But 
Yes. You know, it's a box with the length of two nanometers. Could there be a potential energy? Huh? For number three, with the box being so small, would it just be no potential energy? Inside. Just uh, recall the, so for num number one, recall the energy of uh, the first state in the box, which uh, be inversely proportional to uh, size of the box. And it will be like uh, h per square by square of stuff. And uh, you, you need to, if you set up energy equals EV, then you solve for L by plugging in the values of, of constants. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, I don't remember it from the top of the head, but it will be we, we already did this uh, conversion in uh, in the code for density of states. So some factors were there, uh, or it was a way to avoid factors through so this atomic system of units. And uh, the size will be uh, for two electron volts. It will be of the order of uh, like one nanometer. But I don't remember exactly. So there is summation of uh, two signs. Integrate and integrals of products are always challenging. It much easier to kind of, uh, to process summations. So, is there a way to uh, convert this product into summation? There should be three metric. Uh, Identities, <coughs> which we can And I don't remember this uh, conversion identities when I'm um, in doubts, uh, it's better to re rederive them through Weber equation. So if you do not trust me, which is a normal thing, just uh, rederive this Weber or look in Wikipedia. If, if I'm lying at this equation, the rest will be garbage. Well, maybe one of the ideas will be more than this. But if this uh, conversion is correct, then product of uh, two signs, this will be alpha, this will be beta, then uh, we will have two and half minus cosine, so alpha plus beta will be three by x over L. And uh, Alpha minus minus beta will be cosine of minus phi x over L. 
Well, uh, cosine is a symmetric function, so uh, it's nothing wrong to replace sine by cosine. So if this was uh, co correct, then our 1x2 matrix element will be rewritten as 1 over L from normalization. Then we will have uh, brackets, two terms, two integrals. First integral will be uh, also one half out of brackets. So first it will be this minus sine cosine x over L times x dx plus second integral from zero to L capital cosine y x or L times x dx. There is nothing wrong in uh, looking online for Wikipedia or looking in tables of integrals. If you know how to use them or if you, in addition to MATLAB, there is another very popular tool for uh, mathematical computations, uh, so-called Mathematica. It uh, solves um, radicals. It does an analytical uh, calculations. So I'm trying to instruct how to do it by pen and paper, but if you have alternative ways, it's uh, absolutely acceptable. We need the answer and, and analysis of the answer. So there are two integral. One that depends on pi x. We can call it I1 because uh, it's, and I3 because uh, there is a cosine 3 pi x. Typically, the uh, most very simple integrals that we, we, we take in definitions, it's a three trigonometric or several trigonometric functions, or only polynomial functions. But here is the little challenge that we have a product of polynomial and trigonometric. So uh, we do not know what to submerge under sign of uh, differential. So um, I will try to take this I1 integral and see what, what happens. So only one integral cosine by x over L times x dx. So we already done this uh, first and second. Now we are doing uh, the third, third part. So if we do not know how to take integral, we uh, and we do not have ideas, we just try several rules that you know. And one of the rules is this uh, integral by part. So uh, we need to identify what will be u, what will be v uh, uh, in in this expression. But uh, if x is u, then what will be the v? You're, you're right, I agree with you. Oh, okay. So what will be the v? So we uh, may want to identify this uh, combination of uh, cosine dx as dv. Right? So we are going to submerge cosine under the sign of differentiation. So what is the integral of cosine? Positive or negative? 
positive. Okay, so it will be d of sine phi x or l. And what should we do to the constants? We probably need to uh, flip this stuff, so put l over pi at, at front, right? Because when we will be taking uh, differential, the pi over l will come in front and we need to uh, compensate it. Are you fine with uh, this expression? Is the, the logic acceptable? So we hope that we will be able to practice uh, integration by, by parts. And we did submerge the cosine under the differentiation design. Now we have <coughs> x is considered as u, and d sine considered as dv. Now let's practice uh, u times v minus integral v du. Just uh, practice this uh, rule. So we keep the constant L capital over y of the brackets. Then we have u times v, so x times sine y x over L capital explored at limits from zero to L capital minus integral v du. So our v is sine pi x divided by L and our u is x dx close the back from zero to So what will be the sign of pi x over L if x equals L? It will be sign of pi, right? If x equals L, we have L divided by L, 1. What is sign of pi? Zero. zero. And what will be this expression when x equals uh, zero? Zero. So you don't have this term. L divided by pi, we inherit minus sine, and then what is the integral of uh, sine? So it will be negative cosine. So we we get one more minus, minus one, minus one, which will likely cancel each other. We have L over pi from uh, our conversion to this U and V variables. And we are going to have another uh, L over pi from this integral. So we are getting L over, over pi squared. times cosine by x over L. Explored in the limits from zero to L capital. Uh, I'm not the champion in smart use of space, therefore we will go up. equals L squared by squared. What is value of cosine of zero? One. Minus one at lower limit. What is the value of cosine of 
one. If you plug in here, uh, no, no, cosine of pi, negative one. So minus one, minus one will be minus minus one. Just kidding. Minus two. <laughs> minus two L squared divided by pi squared. Okay. And then uh, we process the integral I3 by the same protocol. The difference will be only the uh, factor up front. So everywhere where we had L over pi, we will have L over 3 pi, right? Everywhere where we had L squared over pi squared, we will have L squared over 9 pi squared. And the sign in front of this integral is negative, right? So if we, uh, if you want to process the I3 integral, it will be, it should be same stuff, stuff as here with opposite sign, so plus, if you have two, if you have L squared divided by pi squared, but in addition, we in inherit the uh, factor nine in the denominator. And if we add together I one, how was it? Uh, I three plus I one, it will be two ninths L square over pi minus uh, factor two will be like eighteenths divided by nine L square over pi. Which will be like sixteen L square over pi. But double check. I don't like uh, making errors, not intentionally. You mean that's that? Uh, the, uh, the answer for, uh, for the overall stuff uh, will be will be 1 over 2 L times 16 L squared over nine pi, pi squared. Nine pi squared. Over 9 pi squared, yes, correct. Thank you so much. Alex plus 1. And then we can uh, cancel 2 and 16 here, getting 8. And we can cancel L here and two there, so you get uh, eight L over nine pi squared. Okay, similar to your independent practices. Ah, <laughs> good. I'm so happy to be supported by someone. Because you, you, you see through this uh, chain, there are so many chances to make mistake. And while grading, I will be, I'll try to be generous, understanding that it is not, not an easy thing. So uh, we, are, we will run to the next problem, but um, do you see any value? What is the use 
what is the benefit of this matrix element for real life? If you accept the hypothesis that the course is not a mean to torture young minds. Any connection to real life? Well, of course, in the next, in the question number three, we will find uh, dynamics of expectation value of the X operator. But this can be considered as torture of, of uh, students. Uh, is there anything more general, useful? What? What is your opinion? about the off-diagonal matrix element for the particle in the box. Anyone? It, it, it's uh, no way for great. It is just uh, bird's eye, bird's uh, glance on, on, onto the things. Um, what is dipole? Dipole, yes. It's magnet. Well, there is no magnetic. Di uh, there is magnetic dipole. There is no magnetic monopole. <laughs> but uh, electric dipole. If th if there are positive and negative charge nearby. Um, if there is a positive the arrow from pointing to partial charges. Correct, correct. So if there are uh, anion and cation or positive and negative charge nearby, and uh, they are, they have equal Your call will charge, be disconnected. and they are offset by distance uh, r or we can tell x, then the dipole will be equal charge times their distance. This is really important because dipole gives a very specific pattern of electric field. Like if you draw electric field uh, sourcing from single charge, it will look like a hedgehog, right? Field will come into all directions. But if you look onto uh, field of the uh, dipole, it will be force lines starting at plus and ending at uh, minus. You saw these pictures uh, probably in uh, some textbooks, right? And if you have polar solvents, they have dipole at each mole, right? One thing. Another thing, if you apply voltage and electric field, your dipoles will rotate along the field, same as compass, right? So the energy of interaction between electric field and your polar molecules will be just uh, electric field times times dipole, which can be vector. And this is not the, the, the end of the story. Just relax a little. I'm trying to entertain you as much as scientists can entertain other scientists. Um, if your molecule is being irradiated by light, if it is able to absorb light, if it does have ability to absorb and emit light and has spectrum. You know that uh, sometimes people draw spectrum. Wavelengths, absorbance, and near the visible light, some, uh, some spikes, right? So intensity of ability of molecule to absorb light at certain frequency is proportional to Transitional, transition dipole squared. And since dipole is just depending on electron's charge, we can put charge out of brackets and tell that it is transition between quantum state I, quantum state J, bracket square. So uh, taking matrix elements of the position operator is critically important. It's like 50% or maybe a little less, 40% of uh, scientific efforts in theoretical spectroscopy, in trying to compute ability of molecules to uh, absorb and emit light. 
So when molecules are absorbed and emit light, uh, we need to compute matrix elements like this. Or if it is not molecules but particles in the box, if those are quantum dots or quantum nanowires, uh, 